Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're gonna make a drum. Uh, I already did the frame, but I'm gonna show you how I go about stretching the hide on it. It's a natural deer hide, uh, and we'll get into that in just a minute when we get to that part. I wanna show you my hide, or um, excuse me, my drum. This is a 13 inch drum. Uh, this has a mule deer hide on it, which is a little bit thicker and it's going to sound a little bit deeper. And you can see the finished product on the back. Uh, how I bring it together and make a handle here to hold on to it. Uh, and then I'll explain the wood right now. So in the process of making the the wood base I don't make round obviously I make the uh, octagon shaped it's just easier for me uh, and less time consuming in all honesty what I like to do is get uh, wood that is close to one by four uh, and I'll show you here this is actually old flooring um, that was never used and it's all pine so we have one inch or three quarter inch there. I cut them all down to the same size, about two and a quarter, two and three eighths. Uh, the length all depends on the size of drum that you want to make. Normally I'll make uh, the 13 inches, which is what this is, just like my drum. So that brings me right in the neighborhood of five inches, maybe a five and an eighth in case I need to trim anything to make them even. Then I clamp, glue it and clamp it together and let it set for at least 24 hours. Uh, I've never had one break on me. I've had, if I, in the process, if I was working with it and didn't put enough glue and brush it across the joints and stuff, then there was a problem, but that's only been on two. And I've been doing this, oh, I think since 2012, 2011, something like that. So all of this was really self-taught. It's before I even discovered YouTube. Um, it's all part of my heritage uh, as a Native American background. And so making these types, of course, there's sanding and everything involved to, because I make, like to make them nice and smooth and where the, the uh, skin will stretch over it. I like the flooring for that purpose too because there's less contact on the very top of it. Even though if I do just use a uh, one by two or one by three, whatever, and cut it down or sand it down, then I'll just take this and bevel it just a little bit more to where the skin just literally wraps around like the top of mine does. And I don't know if you can see it, but like right in here, you can see how it, it rolls. There's a nice roll to it. So that way when you stretch it, it's actually stretching the whole thing instead of putting pressure on it where it might eat into the leather over time. So what I normally do is pull out the hide. It's still soaking. This is the step you have to be really careful with and make sure that you get the hair side of the hide, which is to the, to the touch is much, much smoother because when it's wet, it's harder to tell. But in here, you can tell that this was actually against the, uh, the flesh. Now, what I did was I actually used a tool, there we go, to punch the holes in for the leather. Uh, that makes it just so much easier. It's a little die cutter like so uh, And the way I do it is I lay it hair side of the skin down and then use my Holes to line up actually I use this to mark the holes and then punch them out and that's what that's what you have left Now I use a black permanent marker sharpie to go ahead and mark them even when it's wet and then uh, make sure that they're placed very close to the holes 
and it's going to come out just like this now as you stretch it it's going to obviously pull harder now the one thing that you have to be careful of is now i can tell by the i don't know if you can see this on the on the camera or not but this here is much thinner than what this is you can actually feel the difference and you can almost see the difference what it, this is is the what it's representing is that this part what it now places as the top was towards the back in other words the backbone of the animal that comes down and as it gets thinner that's what's coming down towards the belly so i would say that this came from just a normal white-tailed deer and uh it, it is probably closer to the spine than it is the stomach because it's just this section right here from what i can feel is much thinner so whenever you're doing your tightening with the paracord you have to be really careful not to accidentally pull too tight or it will break it'll break and tear right through like right here we have a small tear so we're gonna have to be really really careful of that whenever we cut it out of the main hide now the paracord that i use is uh, the color blue is the only one that i could find and as you can tell this is uh five thirty seconds in diameter and it's 38 foot long and that is this paracord right here now i won't be using the entire 38 feet but it'll be probably about 30 feet i would imagine uh we're close to it so basically we want to line up our holes as close to the points on this particular uh, base that we can and sometimes you have to stand up and you're going to find that it's going to be really really close really close but you center it the best that you can and you can make adjustments along the way because you'll you'll see me moving it now I'm not going to bore you with everything as far as uh, the entire detail of how to do this. However, I am going to show you the very beginning because I think that's very important. So the way I like to do it is that I'll start by coming in, go clear to the other side, going in one hole out and then back in you can get a better shot of it there bringing it all the way back so find a center point and just doing what is similar to a surgeon's knot like so and then finding the center which is right about there and hopefully being able to bring it back and run the end through this surgeon's knot and tightening it I did that wrong. Yeah, I did. I did that wrong. <laughs> okay, I made a mistake. Hold on one minute. I'll correct it. Okay, now we have it corrected. 
So I put the end loop on this end and pulled it through and tightened it to where I can feel it and it's pretty well centered. So we're good to go there. Now all we have to do is turn it this direction and repeat the process. like this it takes a lot because you have to pull that 38 foot of uh, cord through but it gets easier once you get it done as far as uh, these different directions time-consuming but it, you have to be very careful in how you're doing it and make sure that it's going to line up exactly the way you want it uh, you can adjust it along the way and actually pull it a little bit tighter but what I've found is as long as you're getting the sides where they need to be see look I have to pull this this direction just a little bit the base towards me and then pull it up like this. Now it doesn't have to be super duper tight because you're going to be doing the wrapping and everything for the handhold in the center later on and that's what's going to help stretch it. And all we have to do is come this way. We're going to go from here to here and then eventually from there to there. So you want to go underneath and the reason I have these forceps is because this helps me not have to worry about losing the tightness that I want. So I just leave it right in there like that. So again, I'll go ahead and feed all the paracord through. Make sure you don't have anything around you that could possibly interfere by hanging up the paracord like I've apparently just done on the arm of my chair. <laughs> Right here, and then I'm 
free to do with this as I wish. Take that one off. Now I want to go over here. So what I'm going to do is, actually I want to go over here. So I'm going to go underneath, back towards the forceps. here but leaving these forceps on so I don't lose that now as you can see the way it's going to come I'm going to go to the left hole back in through the right and repeat the process so let me go ahead and get this part done and we'll see if we can't come back with the rest of it when I'm almost completely finished and show you how I do the wrapping Okay, so this is what it looks like completed as far as stretching the hide itself. And as you can see, it's pretty even. It looks nice, pretty taunt, not too bad. When I tighten these, it's just snug, if you will. It's just tight enough to where I know that they're not going to be too loose. So at that point, I normally get a like a bread bag type of uh, fastener and just go ahead and put my paracord like this so that I ha don't have to keep pulling it through like I did with the holes. But what I'm doing here is actually going to wrap around four, one, two, three, four at a time like what was on, on mine. So that way we'll have four separate sections. And the reason I do this is because it brings it all together. Like so. And starts to pull it in nicely. And tightens it all up. You can move this to make sure it's nice and tight hold it here do the same thing normally I'll do this well depending on the drum six maybe seven times each uh, And it starts to open it up a little bit easier where you can get the paracord through. Now, see, that was a twist that I was telling you about. So you have to take and twist the, the cord itself. Pull it this way. And pull it this way. And that way it's nice and tight. One, two, three, four, five, six. This will be number seven. Then what I like to do is go between the third and fourth, stick it down because you won't be able to see it from underneath, but that comes later on how we finish tying it off. And take it over to your next four, which is one, two, three, four. two, three, four, and then go in the opposite direction on the opposite side. And we'll finish, show you that uh, finished stage coming up next. Okay, so here's what the T looks like after you're wrapping from the center outwards. And this just adds more tension to the drum skin. Uh, to the hide that way when it begins to dry it will definitely get tighter 
but you again you don't want it too tight that's going to bust through those holes that we punched out on the skin itself so as you can see i made the first wrap here um and you normally or i normally will just continue by going depending on what's really how many i need sometimes like on this one i might only need two And then I'll come back in the other direction. Now this may seem a little confusing, but it's not really that bad. So now you come back this way. Basically, you're just making your X right in the center. But this is what we have to do in order to create the handhold. And it just looks a little bit better. Instead of just having rough rope on the ends there. First was two. This is four. And then we'll decide on how big we want to get for the handle itself. And then you see I'm ending here and then bringing it back up here and going opposite. And I'll show you the rest of that when it's finished here in just a moment. Okay, folks, there you have it. That's the finished product in the back. Once again, just ran the paracord through the... Uh, hide and through the holes always going opposite directions i did the flat side first and then and then the corners and then proceeded to wrap these to make the cross and bring it in nice and tight you can tell just by feeling it they're much tighter and then wrapped around in opposite directions to make a nice little handhold where it almost fits in your palm. It's just much more comfortable so that you can hold it with this either your right or left hand while you're playing it. And it doesn't really matter. You know, you, you can be right-handed or left-handed. It's just what you're comfortable with. Even if you wanted to take and you put your, your fingers through it like this or however you wish to hold it that's most comfortable for you. And the, uh, the parts that I was telling you about, the, like here, when I was doing it from one side to the other, and it has this here, that's how I fastened it on this end and then super glued it to make sure that it wasn't going to come out. So there you have a yellow white pine base that I showed you in the very first part of the video, the blue paracord, and deer hide. Obviously, it's still wet. It's, it's, it's damp. It's, it's not like soaking wet because that's why I also use the towel to help soak up some of that moisture. But that's also why I didn't bore you with going through the whole thing. I had to do it rather fast so that it would be able to stretch once it got completed as far as the stre stretching went. So it has a nice bounce to it now. I can feel it. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and like I said, what's really cool too is what you have as the thicker side that I was telling you about that goes towards the backbone as compared to the thinner side, which is the, the belly, you're going to find that a drum like this is going to have multiple tones to it throughout, whether you play it on the edge here where it's thicker as compared to the thinner and so on and everything in between and even side to side that's the beauty of these natural drums you know they're not synthetic they're all complete completely natural except for the paracord of course uh, and they sound beautiful and every single one of them has a different tone to it and they're distinct um, and that's what makes it unique and personable to whoever purchases purchases them now, with that being said, yes, I do sell them. 
if you want to leave your name and email in the comment section, I can send you information uh, and build you one. I also uh, paint them if there's something that you would like on, like a Native American scene or a beach scene or something like that, I can also do that at an additional cost. But anyway, hope this helps you out as far as you making your own because there are places where you can buy your own drum kits. This is what I've felt, found for myself and felt it works the best. Um, and I hope it's helped you out. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, the next video is going to be how to make your own beater or mallet uh, that goes right along with your drum. Hope this has helped all of you out and you enjoyed the video. If you did, please share, like, comment, uh, hit the little subscribe, hit the little bell notification, and you'll see more things that I'll be making uh, that I normally do, whether it's paintings or fishing gear or drums or whatever it is that I do, because it's never the same. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week. We'll see you the next time on Raw Life. Bye-bye.